Okay guys, today we're going to talk about the Midwest region. So this is going to be our study for the week. So it's the week of April 20th through the 24th. So we're going to study the Midwest region this week. Um, and these are the states that are going to be included. We have Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. So um, we have, there are two different regions that we're going to talk about. You have the Great Lake regions, which are going to be these lighter pink areas because they all touch the Great Lakes. And then you have these plain states, which are going to be the darker pink areas. So um, each of these has, I mean, this is just a list of all sorts of different facts about it. Um, about each state, you've got the capital of Illinois is Springfield. The capital of Indiana is Indianapolis. The capital of Michigan is Lansing. The capital of New Minnesota is St. Paul. The capital of Ohio is Columbus. The capital of Wisconsin is Madison. The capital of Iowa is Des Moines. The capital of Topeka is, or Kansas is Topeka. The capital of Missouri is Can Jefferson City. The capital of Nebraska is Lincoln, capital of North Dakota is Bismarck, and the capital of South Dakota is Pierre. Um, and then if you look here next to each state, it has the postal abbreviations of each state, the postal abbreviations set out by the U.S. Postal Service, and they are a two-letter abbreviation for each state. So, um, for example, Illinois is I-L, Indiana is I-N, and for the most part, it's the first letter of the state and the second letter, but then there are some states, for example, Michigan and Minnesota, both have M-I, so they have the M-I for Michigan and then the M-N for Minnesota to help um, make sure that theirs are different. So, talking about the geography, um, the Midwest has a lot of really important waterways. Some are these Great Lakes here. So there are five Great Lakes. The best way to remember them is to use the acronym HOMES. So H for Huron, O for Ontario, M for Michigan, E for Erie, and S for Superior. So if you look over here at the map, you have Lake Ontario right here, Lake Erie right here, just north of Ohio, Lake Huron is over here, Lake Michigan is this one, and then Lake Superior is this one up at the top. So those are the, um, the, the Great Lakes. And if you look over here, there it gives you the maximum depth. Lake Erie is going to be the most shallow of the five Great Lakes, and Lake Superior is the deepest. And the deepest point there is 1,333 feet, which is super deep. And um, Lake Erie is only 210 feet deep. So you can see that they have different depths um, depending on the on the lake. Um, waterways that are also going to be important are going to be rivers. So the Mississippi River, we've talked a lot about this year. We've got Mimal right here and it starts way up here in Lake Itasca and then it comes all the way down the front of Mimal and it's a really important waterway in the Midwest for transportation and trade. You also have the Missouri River which is way over here and it actually forms, it comes into the Mississippi making it a tributary to the Mississippi. You have the Ohio River over here that starts way over here in Pittsburgh and follows the southern border of Ohio and then the southern border of Indiana and Illinois until it meets the Mississippi, also making the Ohio River a tributary of the Mississippi. The Platte River is over here in Nebraska and it actually is a tributary to the Missouri and then the Missouri then flows into the Mississippi. So you can see all three of these major rivers flow into the Mississippi. Um, these have been really important for transportation and trade in the Midwest all the way through. Um, they've helped to get goods from one place to another. Um, in the past, you've got, I always talk about rivers being the highways of the past. So those are ways that people not only traveled, but they also were important for trade. These are the top 15 populated cities in the Midwest. You've got Chicago at the as the most populated at almost 3 million, so 2.7 million. Um, and then you've got Indianapolis, Columbus, Detroit, and then Milwaukee rounding out the top five. And then Cincinnati is way down here at number 13 at just about 300,000 people. So these are the top 15 populated cities in the Midwest.
Oh, and I forgot to tell you, these are pictures of each of the top five. So this is a picture of Chicago, Indianapolis, Columbus, Detroit, and then Milwaukee. Okay, we're going to go on to the Great Lake states. So these are our Great Lake states, again, because they touch the Great Lakes. So you've got Ohio touching the Erie, Michigan touching Huron and Lake Michigan, Indiana is touching Lake Michigan, Illinois is touching Lake Michigan, Wisconsin touches Lake Michigan and Superior up here. Oh, Michigan also touches Superior because this purple part up here is called the Upper Peninsula. Um, so Michigan's kind of interesting. It has, it's split into two parts. You've got this main part, which most people think looks like a mitten, and then this upper part called the Upper Peninsula. And then the, uh, the state of Minnesota touches Lake Superior as well. Okay. So the Great Lake states, and I figured I'd show you a little bit of each state because some you may or may not have traveled to these states. So first we're going to talk about Illinois, so right here in this darker pink. And these are some pictures of Illinois. So this is um, this is Chicago. So it not it's, Illinois not only has big cities like Chicago, but it also has a lot of farmland, and then we have some hills, things like that. So you can see some flatland here and some um, some farmland here, but you can also see some hills and beautiful things here. Um, then we have Indiana. So this is Illinois neighbor right here and our neighbor. And Indiana has a lot of flat land in it. It has some farmland um, and things like that, but it also has big cities. This is um, the city of Indianapolis. So this is downtown Indianapolis. There's this big um, monument in the middle of downtown there's a circle here where it's a road you can see the brake lights and headlights here and then there's um, lots of stuff right around it michigan is the one i just talked about a minute ago it has two parts it, it's shaped like a mitten here and then this is the upper peninsula so michigan is known for all sorts of different things it has beautiful lake views but it also has um, a lot of forests and hilly areas but it also has big cities this is the city of detroit so it um it has Lots of wilderness, but it also has um, has cities as well. Minnesota up here, the nickname is the land of a thousand lakes. So you can imagine it has a lot of lake area. Um, so it has some rural areas where it's, um, it's, you know, smaller towns and farm areas. But then it also has some big cities. It has a lot of water in it, being known as the land of a thousand lakes. Ohio home sweet home over here so we have this is downtown cincinnati you may recognize that um, ohio has it's kind of interesting we're close to the appalachian mountains on the eastern side so we have a lot of hills over here on that eastern side but then on the western side we have a lot of um, a lot of farm area and a lot of flat areas where farming is going to be prominent um, and then we have a lot of forests and things like that as well uh, wisconsin is right here and Wisconsin has a lot of farmland. Um, they're famous for a lot of dairy and cheese and things like that. Um, and also lots of um, other plants and things that they grow as well. But um, they have a lot of farmland, but they do have some some big cities. This is the city of Madison in, in Wisconsin. Um, now we're on to the Plains states. Now, Minnesota is technically not a plain state on this map. I couldn't find a map that didn't have it on there. Um, that was clear enough. So the these are going to be your plain states. Minnesota, because it does touch a lake, is a Great Lake state. But you can see that these plain states don't touch the lakes at all, and they're actually going to be a pretty. They're going to be pretty flat. So these are just some pictures of plain states. You can see a lot of um, a lot of flat um, grassy areas, not a ton of trees. So this is what your plain states are really going to look like. So we're going to start with Iowa. So if we think about my mole, this is Iowa. So his eye is in Iowa. And again, you're going to see a lot of flat, flat land, prairie land, or um, farming land. So these are bales of hay that they've um, harvested and they're ready to um, take off to where they need to sell them or get them to where they need to go. Um, they do still have some major cities. This is the city of Des Moines. Next, we've got Kansas, another really flat state. Um, so again, you've got a lot of flat area, a lot of farming area, but they do have some cities as well. So it's not all rural areas. Missouri is down here. So Missouri is going to be Mimel's uh, chest. So he wears a red shirt for because he's a big uh, Cardinals fan. 
you again you're going to have some farming land here you're going to have some hills and forests and things like that as well but you're also going to have big cities you have st louis which is right here you've got the um the gateway arch and missouri is also just like iowa and minnesota going to be right on the mississippi river so you're going to have a lot of um a lot of area the whole front of missouri is going to be part of the mississippi river so you are going to have a lot of uh river areas Nebraska is over here. It almost it looks a little it looks like it would be rectangular if it didn't have this chunk taken out of it. Um, Nebraska again is going to be pretty flat with a lot of farming land, um, but it does have it does have some cities and things like that in it as well. North Dakota way up here, this dark reddish pur pinkish purplish color. Um, it, North Dakota is really interesting. It does have some flat areas where there's going to be farming, but it has some really interesting hills to it. So you can see some of these hilly areas and yes, it does have some cities in it. Um, it doesn't have a large population at all, but it does have a couple of smaller cities and you can see how different a city like this looks compared to, um, compared to something like Chicago. South Dakota is our next one. So just South of North Dakota is South Dakota. And South Dakota has some flatlands and prairie land too, but it does have an amazing um, national park called the Badlands. So the Badlands are very hilly. They're kind of an interesting um, land formation. We'll talk about them in a little bit too. But you can see that it has some hills. It has some plateaus and flat area and grassland areas. There's some buffalo up here. Um, and then they do also have some cities. Again, South Dakota is not a really large population um, it's, it doesn't have a large population, it, but it does have people and it does have some urban areas, but they're not nearly as big as something like Chicago. All right, let's talk about some famous landmarks. Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota. So yes, this was a really large um, rock formation. And then um, there was a guy named Gustav Borlum, Borglum, and he was, um, in 1941, he was the one that um, had this idea to make this project. It was really hard to do. Um, so these faces are 60 feet tall and they have three, four presidents here. You have George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Um, there's also a museum and all sorts of other activities that are in this national park, but this is Mount Rushmore. This is called Chimney Rock in Nebraska. So this is a natural geological formation um, and it is about 300 feet tall. And um, this is in Nebraska. So this is unlike Mount Washington or Fort Washington, Fort Walla, Mount Rushmore. There we go. That's what happens when I talk too fast. Um, this is not changed by humans. Mount Rushmore was something that was natural, but then changed by humans. Chimney Rock is not. Uh, the Badlands in South Dakota, this is what I was talking about earlier. These, they have these really tall towers and steep canyons and all sorts of things. Um, there's a lot of wildlife that lives in here. So this is a really amazing um, national park that's in South Dakota. The Gateway Arch, this is a man-made landmark. Um, this is in um, Missouri in St. Louis, and it's seen as the gateway to the west because it is right where the Mississippi River is. So everything west of the Mississippi is seen as the western part of the United States. So this is the um, the the gateway to the west. Um, Lake Itasca is up in Minnesota. It's the headwaters or the beginning of the Mississippi River. It's the source. So it's really small, but then it becomes this really gigantic river by the end as all the tributaries come through. Mackinac Bridge in Michigan. This is a man-made bridge. It's a suspension bridge and it is five miles long. It's pretty amazing. Um, so it's up here in that upper peninsula area and it um, bridges between the upper peninsula and the lower peninsula. So it connects those two land masses of Michigan. Cave of the Mounds up in Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, yes, has a lot of flats, um, flat land and a lot of uh, farmland, but it also has these amazing caves. So these are um, caves that you can go into. You can see this family here. So it's it's not something that's, I'm sure they have really adventurous caves, but they also have some that are, are ready for any level of, of, um, of experienced person that's in there um, in the cave. Okay, natural resources. We have 
um, all sorts of resources here in the Midwest. You can see this key over here. We have farming, forest, grazing, urban areas, all sorts of things with these colors. So you've got, you can see that a ton of the Midwest is going to be farming, this light green color. So we have a lot of farmland, which is also why the Midwest is called America's breadbasket, because we're able to make far, uh, flour out of wheat and corn and things like that. So that's how we got the nickname America's breadbasket, because we produce a lot of wheat and corn um, and other things that are going to be um, feeding America. Um, you also have some forest area. You've got some forest areas up near the lakes and over here in Ohio um, and up in the northern part of Michigan. Grazing. So this is going to be really handy for those very flat areas in um, some of our plain states like North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. So they have um, a lot of animals like cattle and things like that that are out there grazing that can be used um, as food and other things as well. Um, you have apples in Michigan, cattle over here, a lot of cattle. You've got chickens kind of kind of spread out all over the place. Um, you can see corn and wheat here on our um, on our map. There's a lot of wheat over in this area and you can see a lot of corn in here. So these are a lot of resources that we have. Again, our food resource, we, resources, we have a lot of dairy. Wisconsin's very famous for dairy. Um, we have livestock, wheat, corn, and we also have a lot of water as resource with all the lakes and rivers that we have. Um, so Midwest resources, you can, there are a lot of them that are gathered through manufacturing, farming, and mining. So we have a lot of resources, but then how do you use them? How do you get them places? So through farming, we can use all that fertile soil. Manufacturing, we can actually um, make things like cars and, um, and all sorts of different things. And then mining, we have a lot of resources that we end up mining. Things that are minerals like lead, copper, iron. Um, we also produce a good bit of salt. Um, some of the Great Lakes um, in, in the, up near the Great Lake area, remember we used to have this ancient ocean that went over our area. Um, and so some of the salt deposits there are able to produce um, or able to, for us to mine salt so that people can use it on their tables and their roads and all sorts of stuff. Um, so we do, these are some pictures of some manufacturing plants. So yeah, we do things like cars and electronics, but we also do things like this is bread being baked. Um, and then down here, they're producing other things. So um, our industry and our factories are really important. Transportation has always been an important part of the Midwest. Um, it's It's been important for travel, but it's also been important for getting goods to where we want to go. We really started out pretty primitively with this is called a flat boat, and it's flat. That's why it's called a flat boat, and they would just pile their goods on there. The downfall of that is it only went downstream. The steamboat could go upstream and downstream because it had a steam engine in it. So this paddle wheel at the back would make it go up or downstream. This, oops. Oh, this is um, a railroad train. So the, once they were able to get railroad tracks out there, they could um, use the transportation in areas that didn't have rivers and things like that. So the railroad became an important thing as well. All right, on to this week's bingo. So must do. So you're going to watch this video. You're almost done. Um, and then you're going to get a bingo. So you have nine different options here. You need to get either three across, three down or three diagonal. So you could go three across the top, three across the middle, or three across the bottom, and then down on the left, down in the middle, or down on the right, and then you could go diagonal either way. Um, so you just have to do three activities in a row, and then you'll submit those. Um, if you want more to do, you could get a coverall, and you could also do, there's an optional Midwest activity as well. So if you're looking for more, there's, there's more that you could do, but the only thing you're required to do is watch this video and then do your bingo. So <clears throat> one of your bingo options is to read this article called The Geography of the Midwest. Once you're done reading it, you'll answer these questions, which will be the third page on your PDF. And then once you've answered those, that would be one of your bingo items. Um, there's another article called Industry Grows in the Midwest, so you would read that article and then answer the questions that are on the third page of that PDF as well. Um, another option would be the Midwest Today, and these are the, are the questions for your article there.
and then transportation in the Midwest. We talked a little bit about it in this video. Um, so you would read this and then answer the questions here on the um, at the end of the PDF. Other bingo options. You have some coloring stuff that you could do with the map. So you've got the north central states and the north e the nor eastern north central states. Um, we would really call these more like the lake states, which is what we were doing. And then this is more the plain states, except they did stick Minnesota in there. Um, but just follow the directions and color them and label them if that's the option you choose. There is a crossword puzzle that you could choose. There is a word search that you could choose. You could design your own state quarter. So you're going to want to use Epic. This is a screenshot of my Epic. You're, I have a, um, a whole section about the Midwest. So you could choose a book in there about a state that you'd like to learn more about and then design your own quarter. So a couple of things, what year did your state, be, your state become a U.S. state? And then um, your quarter should have at least two symbols, symbols of the state. Which symbols did you use and why? So you're going to read, use the book on Epic to find your information and then create your quarter. Um, you could also, another option on your, um, on your bingo is to just read a book on Epic. And then when you're done, just screenshot the part where it tells you you finished the book so that I can see you finished the book. And that would be what you would submit for that. Okay, so remember to plan ahead. You have a whole week to work on this bingo. Um, so make a plan how on how you're going to get it completed. By watching this video, you've already done one item, right? You've already watched this one. So, and I'm almost at the end, and then you just need to complete three bingo activities. So make a plan, which ones are you going to do? And you might want to preview or look at the things to decide uh, if you, if that's something you're interested in. So decide what you're interested in, then make your choices. Once you've completed your three activities, you need to just upload your three items or attach your three items to your work, and then you'll be good to go. All right, guys. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Come to office hours um, and I can help you out with anything you need. Thanks, guys. Bye.